Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, gosh, my name is Stephen Cannon. I hope you guys are doing well. Um, we are in the midst of a virus outbreak right now, and I always I want us to encourage you that we must look to the Lord. This is in the ups and the downs and everything. I mean, this is literally includes everything in the life. Uh, we've got to constantly be going back to the Word of God. Um, and so I pray that we keep seeking the Lord in His Word. Um, even right now, I mean, some of our churches aren't even meeting right now. Um, just, you know, to prevent the outbreak of this virus. But I pray that we keep encouraging each other and we keep seeking the Lord in His words. Um, and again, I still understand that some of us are working. I'm on my lunch break right now. I have no other option but to do this now. I'm working full time. I um in school full time. Whatever it is. But I pray, seriously, just get down. Get your heart down. And, and to see the Lord humble yourself by pulling your heart down and seeing the Lord. I pray that you humble yourself and you're able to see Him through just this little sermon thing that I have here. Uh, I mean, whatever kind of day you've had, what point you're in your day you're watching this. It may be the morning, the evening, the afternoon. It might have been good. It might be bad. Whatever it is, I just pray that you please open up yourself to the Lord. Humble your heart so that you can hear from Him. So take a deep breath. Relax, and I pray that you get something from this. So anyway, if, if any of you guys, if you have a Bible, please open up your Bible. If you've got your phone, uh, I've got my phone right now that I'm using on the Bible app. Please open to the book of Psalms. The book of Psalms. This is the second sermon on a psalm or a proverb. I have chosen to do it on Psalms 2. So could you please open to the second chapter in the book of Psalms? I'll give you a second to do that. Okay, so let's see. Let's read along. I'm going to read the entire psalm right now, and then I will break it down as we go. So listen to this. It says, Psalm 2 says, Why do the nations rage and the prophets plot in vain, and the people's plot in vain? The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us burst their bonds apart and cast away their cords from us. He who sits in the heavens laughs, the Lord holds them in derision. Then he will speak to them in his wrath and terrify them in his fury, saying, As for me, I have set my king on Zion, my holy hill. I will tell of the decree the Lord said to me, You are my son, today I have begotten you. Ask of me, and I will make the nations your heritage and the ends of the earth your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron and dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Now, therefore, O kings, be wise, be warned, O rulers of the earth, Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the Son, lest he be angry and you perish in the way, for his wrath is quickly kindled. Blessed are all who take refuge in him. The title of today's message, regular, the theme is, Who or what do you take stock in? Specifically, when things are going good, who do you trust? When things are going bad, who do you trust? We'll be breaking down the psalm and looking at each section as we go on in the minutes. All right, will you please pray with me? Lord, I come to you in Jesus' name, and God, I just stop, and Lord, I ask that you would open up our hearts, our hearts, Lord God, to hear you, to see you, and to be with you. God, even we're in the parking lot right, like I am right now, Lord, or wherever we are in our house, coffee shop, whatever it looks like, God, in this time. Lord, we need you, and I ask, God, that you would please open up our hearts and our eyes, God, that you may be with us and we might be with you. Would you speak to us right now? Let me pray and ask this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Okay, so I want to start out with saying we live in an interesting time. Like, seriously, we have passed the 20th century, we're into the 21st century, survived y Y2, Y2K, you know, whatever it is, the year 2000. Uh, we're it, it, we're in the future, you know, and it's kind of funny because if you've ever watched the movie Back to the Future, awesome movie, they travel. I think it's in the second or the third Back to the Future movie. They travel to the year 2015. They're flying cars, flying hoverboards, self-tying shoes, etc. Whatever it is, I mean, it's just crazy. It's so cool to see the things that have happened and they see going on in the future. 
Well, like, the, it, it's, it's, it's seeing like the human race has advanced so much, and humanity is at the forefront of the frontier. I mean, it's just crazy. I mean, practic it, it's insane what goes on. I mean, in the year 2020, however, where we are right now, not all things are that true. I mean, some of them actually are. But the mindset behind it definitely is true. I mean, it just is. We live in a day and age where technology is rapidly producing new products uh, that benefit the human race. Practically, we're playing, I mean, God, at every level. It's crazy. I mean, we, we have abortion, we have progressive politics, people have sex changes, whatever it is. I mean, we're playing God, and whatever it is, I mean, the human race is going to do it. I mean, as the years going on, people turn away from religion, uh, you know, and they're taking their life into their own hands. But if we take a step back, we can see seriously that we are spinning in the face of God. Um, and it's just something that is going on and on that people are doing by playing God. I'm not trying to be negative. I mean, there are people that are coming to faith in Christ every single day. But in perspective, the entire human race, it's like we are taking a step back and we are saying no to God. We have this in our hands. We will do it. We are in the future. We are powerful. We are humanity in the year 2020. We got this. Don't do this. But, but look, you have to see, look, the, the human race is saying this. We see this is the first part of what Psalms 2 says. Listen to verses 1 through 3. It says, Why do the nations rage and the people's plot in vain? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed. This is the problem. People are setting themselves up against God and the Bible. Is that they're putting, they put God away. They reject his word. They reject his wisdom. There's no regard to the creator. There's no respect given to him. In fact, he's a thought. Actually, They actually think about him, but then they intentionally set themselves up against God. Because they are trusting in themselves. They're not. Ta they're taking stock in their talents, their logic. Well, it's this whole thing. So I ask you, that, that is the problem of what's going on in verses 1 through 3. How does this look in your life? When it comes to, to your job, building your life, your dreams, your career, your home, what, is this about you or is your foundation in God? Is God your world? I'm not asking if God is just part of it, but is He your world? Is He your foundation? Because to these people in Psalms 2, He was not. In many people in our world, God is not their foundation as well. This is the problem. Well, let's look and see what the attempt is. What's the attempt of these people in response to this problem? Well, what's going on? What's their perspective? Let's play devil's advocate for just a little bit. Let's get behind these people that the verses 1 through 3 are talking about and, and, and see. Look what it says. Verses, let's go back to 2 a little bit and finish to 3 again. It says, The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, let us burst their bonds apart and cast away their cords from us. They are gathering together and they are not alone. Do you not see that? They're not just by themselves. They're seeking counsel out. They're literally going and gathering together to seek wisdom out from each other. Their attempt is basically like, okay, we don't need God. We're not going to do God. We're going to reject God. Let's gather all of the smartest people that we can do. Let's get geniuses behind us. Let's go and let's seek the best things and attempts that we can have in life. And in fact, it says they cut themselves off from God. This is the attempt in their life. It's to trust themselves in the good and in the bad. To take stock in their selves, in their logic, and in their way of thinking, not God. And they don't only trust in themselves, but we see that they're trusting in smart people. They gather the kings, the authorities, go and get counsel. Trust in the sciences, the math, whatever it is. But I want us to see the danger here is because we see that verse. We see the problem. We see their attempt is to gather all of their logic and their thinking. And we go, yeah, I see what Psalms is saying. That's not me, though, Stephen. Like, what are you talking about? What, 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 I mean, th there's no way that's not me. But that's the danger because we look at the overall mindset of these people. You, you may not reject God in this dramatic way, but at the core of your life, like them, you are not trusting in God. You're just not. You're caught up in your world, your dream, 
your job, your school, your dream car, dream house, etc. Whatever, whatever. I mean, it can even like good things. There are good things you can go. If you can pursue social work, and it'll be good. But you're not trusting in God. The root of it is that you're trusting in yourself. So you are on even level playing field with these people in Psalms. And but but you don't realize that because your attempt is to, to go off and to fix your own life. So that's the attempt. We see the problem. We go and see the attempt, the logical attempt that we're going to trust in ourselves. But then let's look at the failure. The failure of these people. We see their attempt is, is, is a failure because in verses 4 through 6, Psalm 2, look, verses 4 through 6, it says, He who sits in the heavens laughs, the Lord holds them in derision. Then he will speak to them in his wrath and terrify them in his fury, saying, As for me, I've set my king on Zion, set my king on Zion, my holy hill. We see that their tent is a complete failure because God laughs at them. Literally, God laughs at these people. But he doesn't just laugh at them, he sends his wrath on them. And this is because they've set their paths against God. Maybe not intentionally, you might be thinking, oh, I haven't set my... No, intentionally and in, unintentionally, inadvertently, their attention, their hearts are against God. And that's what I'm saying. You know, we, we may not say this. We may not say like, oh, we've we set our paths against God. We're out to go get God, you know, and all that. But listen to this. Look, Matthew 12, 30. Listen to what this says. Whoever is not with me is against me. And whoever does not gather with me scatters. Inadvertently, we directly go against God. This happens in the lives of people who do not choose Christ. People that reject God, that are going after their own thing, their own treasures, and their promises in life. And it's their attempt of trusting in themselves. But the attempt of trusting in anything but God is a failure. And this is why, because God laughs at them. They're not powerful enough. He is God. He is the creator. We are the created ones. And when we choose not to go with the Lord in our plans and in our lives, we fail. We, we fall short of the glory of God. I mean, that is why if we're not with God, we are against Him. And it even says those who are against Him scatter. They run from Him. They flee. Bring this back down. Let's look and see what the rest of the part of the psalm says. The movement number four, the conclusion that we see. Listen to this. I'm going to go through this. Listen to what this says. This is the answer to the problem. It says right here, let us look at verses 7 through 12. Say, I will tell of the decree. The Lord said to me, you are my son. Today I have begotten you. Ask of me, and I will make the nations your heritage and the ends of the earth your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron and dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Now, therefore, O kings, be wise, be warned. O rulers of the earth, serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the son, lest he be angry and you perish in the way, for his wrath is quickly kindled. Blessed are all who take refuge in him. We see the answer to this. This is God's response to his people. This is to the people who have chosen him, who are seeking him, and who are trusting in him for all things. See, God's response, we see a complete response of the people that are going against God. His wrath is going to come upon them. He laughs at them. He sends them in derision. But the people that are trusting in God in the good and in the bad are taking stock in him and looking to him. God says, they take refuge in me. He says, these people are blessed. This is the answer. This is the conclusion to what the psalm is saying. God starts out, starts out in the Psalm 7, verse 7, with, with God speaking to his son to Christ. It is referencing the gospel, the reign of Christ, and his power. Then it starts with the warning. The conclusion, the warning. It, it, it says this, to heed God. The, this is to heed God. Trust in him and serve him. Heed God. Trust in God and serve God. Proverbs 9.10 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge of the Holy One who is understanding. 
Don't you understand that fearing God, it's not the same as being afraid of someone going to hurt you, but it's having a holy reverence to God. And this is what Proverbs is saying. It's linking that people who trust in God have a fear of God that leads to wisdom and knowledge of God. This is what you and I need to have. So when times are bad, we trust in God. When times are good, we trust in God. When it comes to our lives, our pursuits, and our decisions, we trust in God. It all goes back to God. And as a result, the last verse states to the people who do this are blessed. It says to take refuge in Christ. Ultimately, refuge in Christ means for your soul to take rest and refuge in Christ. This is what this is saying. It's not, it, it, the, the, the conclusion is to rest in Christ. And ultimately, it, Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will make straight your paths. Like these people in Psalms. I don't know where you are, but like the people in Psalms, you might be turned away from God. You might have not acknowledged Him. Who knows? Only you can know that. So I ask you, have you turned away from God or are you turned to God? Your sin separates you from God if you're turned away from God. It separates you. However, Jesus lived a perfect life. He came and he died on the cross, took the punishment for your sins, and rose from the dead three days later. It's literally as if I stand before a judge and I'm guilty. I've committed the crime. I owe the time. I deserve the punishment, but it's like as if the judge's son stepped down and paid my fine for me. Now, is he going to make me take that? No, he's not. I have to accept that gift in order to receive the gift, in order to receive the bell. It's the same with Jesus. Jesus died, and you have to accept the free gift of eternal life that he gives. You don't have to, and he's not going to make you, but it's there, and he wants to give it to you. Christ wants to give you the free gift of life. That's the point of the gospel. And so that's why I ask you, have you accepted Christ? Will you trust in Christ in the good and in the bad? Or will you only accept in Christ at the last moment that you think it's, it's all over? Don't wait to the last moment when you think it's all over. Ask yourself now, are you trusting in God in the good and in the bad? Are you taking stock in God? We can see from Psalms 2 that the people who trusted in themselves, they, they lost all of it. They were lost eventually in the wrath of God it took them. But the people who trusted in God took refuge in Him in Christ. So I ask you, have you trusted Christ? This is the conclusion. We see the breakdown of this. We see the different movements. We see how, how the problem is that these people are rejecting Christ, they're rejecting God, they live in their own lives, they're doing their own thing, and that's their attempt, is to try and make things happen for themselves. And then we see the failure because God laughs at them and says His wrath is coming, that is why, that's the failure and why, and then the conclusion and the answer is this, is to take refuge in Christ, and that the Lord will bless His people. That is the conclusion, those are the four movements that we see in this passage of Scripture. And so I'll read it one more time. Let's read the psalm one more time. So I open the psalm 2. Let's read it out loud. Why do the nations rage and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against His anointed, saying, Let us burst their bonds apart and cast away their cords from us. He who sits in the heavens laughs. The Lord holds them in derision. Then he will speak to them in his wrath and terrify them in his fury, saying, As for me, I have set my king on Zion, my holy hill. I will tell the decree the Lord said to me, You are my son, today I have begotten you. Ask of me, and I will make the nations your heritage and the ends of the earth your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron and dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Now, therefore, O kings, be wise, be warned, O rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice the trembling. Kiss the son, lest he be angry and you perish in the way, for his wrath is quickly kindled. Blessed are all who take refuge in him. Will you pray with me? 
Lord God, I thank you for this time that we've had. And I just pray, Lord, I know that we were required to do this for our classes. And, and, and God, and we might be feeling like we're being forced. Lord God, I pray that we wouldn't do any of that. We would just seek you. God, I challenge, Lord, and I pray that you have challenged us and you clearly give us the option to see, Lord, to trust in you in the good and in the bad, Lord, to not set ourselves up against you, to, to be with you in Christ. And so, God, I pray for everyone listening and seeing this video, God, that uh, you would open their eyes to see the decision that they've made of whether they've accepted you or not. And so, Lord, I ask that you would please just convict us and draw us to yourself. Pray for the rest of our day. And, uh, Lord, thank you for this time. We pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. All right. Well, thank you, guys. I got to get back to work. And uh, I appreciate you listening to this. And I just pray that this psalm really, really changes uh, just the view or maybe throws a thought into your head today regarding God's Word. Thanks, guys. Uh, take care and see you in the next sermon video.